Hello everybody. In this video, I want to talk about um, how to create or sort of create a shop uh, application. In this shop, we will mimic how to have a product, how to have an inventory, how to add a product, pretty much. We're going to mimic how to create an order, how to handle the cart, and how to see the history of those orders, sort of. So it's not going to be perfect, I know, well, it's not going to be perfect, it's not going to be that refined, but just to talk about a little bit about the logic, think a little bit about the infrastructure, of the how we structure actually the application. We're going to talk about authentication, and the really cool thing is not only authentication, I want to talk about authorization too. So that is actually the main goal in here, because I want to try using Firebase, as you can see that I have my console open right now. I want to use Firebase. Um, not only for the authentication piece, but also for the authorization, because we're going to have some roads in there. Um, we are going to save the products in the Firebase store too, in the Fire store. So let's get started. So I just started the project. This project is barely new. It's just a cleanup completely. Um, it have beautify at the fall. It have all the basic things. I have a login already enabled, the way that we already know how to use it. And after that login, you send send me back to my home screen, you not know, doing anything. And in there, I just have a several pages. I have my orders page, that is empty. The card page, inventory, and of course the logout. So what I want to do with that inventory page, I want to have it only for the administrators who are able to see it. And I want to tackle that part right now. So right now we see that it's actually open. But if we log out through the app and we go to the forward slash inventory, we can actually hit the, that, that route without issue, even though we are not logging to the application. So this is it's the things that I want to do right now. I want to start this video with that section. So I already have my code open with the, all the elements. My store is just as it is, and the way that we already know it, with the user, the get user, setting the user, and the action of set user. And the only difference here in that action is just verifying that the user object actually exists, because I have a logic to setting the user at that particular, or pretty much clearing the user somehow, the only one. We have using the persistent state with the VX persistent state, so we can save this store in in local storage. On my views, you have those many views as you already know. My orders, inventory, home, and the card as the way that it is. Then the only one that's a little bit different is my login. It's the same way that you already know using Firebase UI. And whenever I set have the authentication, I just get that user for the authentication and send it send the user to my um, home directory pretty much with this router push. What I'm doing like this way because I don't have a backend, I'm using Firebase completely. So I actually don't need to send the ID token to my backend and verify the this just is actually real to get it. So Firebase is doing that already that for me because I just working in that section. The application view I have my navbar and my navbar is the traditional navbar that you already know with a button with through my app actually it's called muchacho <laughs> i didn't get any better name so you, you actually you call it whatever you want i have my login if i don't have a user if i have a user that means i have my that menu that's a drop down and we have my orders card inventory and the logout method of course everything doing through the firebase authentication setting the users to nothing and router push to anything Etc. Etc. So I'm binding something here. I will talk about it a little bit later. And actually, let me just delete it because we don't need it right now. I want to explain that when we came to here. Just in case, and of course, we need to remove this part too. I just keep it the thing simple as there is, and then we'll move forward from here. I have my Firebase plugin already set up. And in my Firebase, I already have it, the, 
my Firestore 2 and that Firestore is actually already having being exported as it is that Firestore is already get imported in my main JavaScript and that's it the other configurations that I have in my console as you can see I have my email and uh, Google authentication already. Of course, I have, let me just check if I have, let me hide my secret just in case. Of course, I already have my environmental variables with my secret keys there. And other things that I have here that I already set up is my database. And from my database, the only change that I did is on the rules. Right now it's empty, the database. So what I did is just create a new role. So I'm, I'm allowing everybody to read. It's not completely bad practice because I want, for example, because I'm going to be saving the products. I want to everybody be able to see the product, so not only the authenticated people. That's why I'm allowing everything to be read. You can be a little more fine grinding access here. I don't want to do that right now because that's not the focus of fine grind access in Firestore. What I'm doing is everybody can read but only if you're authenticated you can write that's the difference that i've been doing right here and this is pretty much the setup that we need so let me go back to data and let me go back to here so let's get started and before we actually start putting stuff what i want to do is i want to protect my route and i want to protect my routes and i want to show the inventory only if I'm an administrator and I want to show you how, how to handle that a little bit in the application so let's get started so the first thing that we need to do is going to our router in the router we have the several paths already created and on those paths what we have there is actually um, all the different components, all different views being created as the way that there is. So we can actually add, we already have the path element, the name element, and the component element. There's another property that we can add in something that we, we can verify during a router section is actually the meta. And when we create the meta information, we can actually put any key that we want and we can put something that we actually needed over there. So my home directory, I want to make it available to pretty much everybody. That means we can leave it like that. Of course, the login page needs to be open to everybody too. My orders on my card, I want just to the user. So you need to be authenticated to be here. And the inventory, I just want to make it only to the administrators. So the only way to be there is just to be administrator. So how we can actually call that we can actually do requires the meta element and this meta we can actually call something requires role of user let's have it like this and let's copy that to my card section that means that any user can actually hit this section but the inventory only my admin can handle that that's the way that i want to have it there so how can we actually proceed well as you know before we have we can have a function that is like an interception that function is called before each and let me copy something that i already have here in my note And this one will require, let me just import in my store. So I can use import store from the store. So I'm importing my Vuex store here. So what I've been doing, what I've been checking is, and I have a nested if statement. And let me remove this because I don't need those two console logs here. So it's as simple as if the record meta requires role is in there, that means they need to get the user roles. And those user roles need to have the role that is specifying 
and requires metal. What that sing, well, what does that mean? As you can see, the required role for this is actually called user, and the required role for here is actually have admin. So if that particular user have that role assigned, so what I want to do is assign those roles as a um, boolean uh, element. So our user will be changing, and we have the role section. The role we have is going to be an object. I would uh, everybody will have the user true. That means that they are user, and just the admin will have an extra one called admin equal admin true. So I will specify and read that role, and did that role need to be the same one that my route where I'm going, my meta element requires have that specific. So if the user have the roles exist and that role is the one that that meta needed, I just proceed. If not. I'm sending to login. That's it. It's something really, really simple. But we have something else here. I'm also saying that if, the, if that particular route doesn't require authentication, I just proceed because we need to make sure that we always call next. So this next is going to be executed when this is full. That means that route is open. So this is the next that will be create call it whenever we go to the route home or whenever we go to the login. We just authorize it and send that person in. When we're going to these two elements, three elements of pages, we have the validation. And if the user have that particular role, we proceed. If not, we send it to the login page. Now, now that we have it, if I try to go to any of these three pages, we know that it's going to fail. Why? because I don't have my roles assigned to my user yet. It's something that we're going to change now. So if I go back to my application, I'm already to the case, if I try to go to my orders, it sends me to login. Even though I'm already logging in. If I try to go to, to cart, it sends me there. Go to inventory, it sends me here. I can go to home, and as you can see, I can hit login. But my user doesn't have that particular role and something that we need to fix, right? So I mean, let me log out, and we keep it log it out for now. And we need to f change the way that the user is get saved to the database, it get created to the database. So a way to do it, we can actually specify the custom roles inside of the application. But for that, we will require to have a, like a backend somehow of Firebase function that that will change the authentication method to add the roles in there. And I want to keep it simpler. So a way to keep it really, really simpler is just to create um, a user's uh, document. And now we copy the user document and we will retrieve that user from there. And whenever we actually log in that particular user, it's going to be saved to the database. If that database are, if that user already exists, you're just going to merge that element. But the really important is whenever it gets authenticated, we're going to assign the user element. And then we will create the admin element just in the backend. That's going to be our Firebase store. So let me show you that. Um, what is the action that we actually use to decay a user is inside or is actually when we call the login page. So let me just check something really, really quick here. So the login page, what it does is, where is my login page? Oh, right here. The login page, when it's called, I send, I dispatch my set user with the data user, and then I push it. So this element from my store is the one to handle it that authentication somehow. So I want to actually keep it there. And it's called this. And I want to do something here about that authentication and how to measure that the user is going to be saved. So one of the first things that I need to do actually I need 
to import my database. So what I want to do is just import my database from my plugins elements for a subject. So now that I have my database, I want to import that user. So we have the user element, right? So we get that user, and as you remember, that user actually have a lot of information. So what I want to do is I want to extract some of that information at Saber in the user itself. So let me just use something really simple. Call it create the user object. And this user object is going to be the one that's going to be saved in my database. So I will create a user object. And this user object is going to be, of course, an object. And will require a display name. It's going to be exactly the same. And the user dot display name. Of course, I have my email. That's going to be exactly the same as my user dot email. I will have my. Um, I will have my roles, and this is something that I will create here, and I will give it the role called user as true. Everybody will have that user. And I want to have the last access role as a new date. So the only thing that I'm doing here is just to save in where this actually user login to the app. So I want just to keep record. Just we actually don't need it, but it's just a good practice to know when that particular user was the last time that was inside your application. It's something that you need to be measured, and you need just to keep in mind in there. So I'm just creating a user object. I'm pretty much just exploring the email and display name from there. Of course, that user have the UID too, but I don't want to save it as an element here because I want to that to be the key of that particular user. That's why the user object doesn't have the unique ID as the element. So after having that, I will get that particular user. Let's actually have a reference. So we can actually use the user reference, and that is going to be a reference to my database collection. And I will get my users. And I will create or verify the document with one particular ID. And that ID is going to be the user unique ID. So I will create that particular reference that actually needs to be right here because it's outside my user object. Sorry for that. And after I have that just reference, I will set and I need to await. That's why my function is asynchronous. I need to set that particular user. So I will do await my user reference set. This will save the information if the user is there or not. So I will send the user object. So I will set this information to here. But I want to create an extra element. Well, not create, I just want to have the one option, and this actually came from the Firebase. It will put the merge as true. What this means, if that user already exists in the table, it's only going to merge the information. If the database have extra fields, per se, those extra fields don't get lost. So whenever you have set, it's overwrite. It's going to pretty much delete the user and create a new one when the information that you're actually sending. So when I send the merge through, that means if I have a extra information in there already, it's not going to get lost. And I want to show you why I'm doing that in particular. So actually have that, we can actually save get or const user for more database after this it's already created, we can just have an await, get or user ref, not get, just to verify if we can actually get that particular user, and 
instead of committing setting my user, I will save it. And this is going to be only in the view side. Remember that the UID is not getting there, so I just got to get the UID. We're going to be my user dot UID. And I want to get my user database dot the data. Uh, I have an issue here. Oh, this is not a function, and all this is actually an object. There you go. So this what will allow us to do. And let me show you that. Let me go to my Firestore. We can see that we don't have anything there. So let me just authenticate again. If I authenticate right now, I will wait for a minute. You're going to see my Firestore. We're going to see that that user is already created. We have the same UID. And let me go to my users. So this user, I, I have my email here. So my UID start with BWW. So that ID, unique ID that that user have, is the way that I'm saving it in the database. So I have a unique user only. I'm tied it up with my authentication piece. And I have my display name, my email. When I last access, that's pretty much this moment, I my role. As you can see, I have the role as user. And the user is true. Pretty cool, right? So as you can see, it's 10, 18, 04. Let me log out from the application. And let me log in again. And I want to show something that actually happened. And let's actually that's working. Let's go back here. And we can see that the last access gets updated with a new time because I log in again. So we're saying that we actually saving this information. But now, because I have the user role, I'm able just to go to my order now. Because my order can be open just to the user role. If I try to open the cart, I can go to my cart section too, because that one it can be open to the user role. But if I try to go into inventory, it's not allowing me to do it. Because I don't have that particular admin role yet. So let me do something really quick. Let me just log out, log in with my email, and let's actually create the other user. It's going to be my STC account. And from there, let's just create a simple password. Now I'm with my STC account. I can go to my orders. I can go to cart. It still cannot go to the login, so to inventory. If we're going to see, sorry, so here we can see that I have both users already created. So I will use my personal account and I will add a field here. This field will call admin. It's a boolean and it's going to be true. I just add it. This will allow me just as simple as that to log out of course need to log out i log in with my gmail account and my gmail account will allow me just because that particular role to go to the inventory page how cool is that right of course if i log out and i go to my stc account the login page the inventory page cannot be accessible because the STC account is a traditional user and the my personal email is the admin. So I have the administration there. Something extra that I didn't show either is that if I try to go to inventory, I cannot hit it. They send me to login. If I go to my orders, I cannot hit it and I log in. So we have the road protected and we have that particular field saves to the database and we can do actually that kind of validation. 
So that's pretty neat. So the only thing that is actually missing here is going to the navbar. Because now through the navbar, what I want to do is, and let me just connect it with my HTC account, is I don't want to see that inventory there if I'm not a, an administrator. So how we can actually handle that is as simple as going to the navbar, you go into the section that we have the different elements. As you can see, I'm already getting my user, right? So I can actually verify my inventory and I can do a simple be if. And my inventory is just going to be handled only in my user dot role. Um, In my user roles dot admin I believe I can save it like that no I didn't like this part so I can just verify that the user role exists element and user dot role dot admin is part of that only with that particular line to use a validation purpose that if you don't have it it will fail right so with that now it's failing and let me verify that it's actually called roles yes it's actually called roles so let's see what's happening here um user role is not defined oh user roles sorry as simple as can mess a lot so now I have that because I'm with my STC account. I don't see that inventory. This look ugly because I just need to refresh to in order to get the last information. Um, hmm. That's actually weird. Oh, this if element is not need to be in the title side. It to be the item item by itself. So that will actually and you can see a card issue is because that i have this card section here i will talk about that later but now my inventory is not there but if i try to go with my i mean user you will see that me my inventory login appears again so we have pretty much the authentication done and authorization and we are saving all those elements in our database the way that it is pretty neat right so let's actually now start working with um, the product page and how to add that a little bit in the how to add that actually in our how can i say it in our home directory so for that i will require actually no sure that i already have it we need to install view fire view fire to our application because now we're going to be linking or binding elements in our database and i will initially say that the last time well, we initially said it in main JavaScript, but actually it doesn't make sense to initially say that because regarding JavaScript by itself, we can actually just import it in our Firebase element and we can just use it as view because view is already there. And this Firebase element is already get imported in our main JavaScript. So with that, we just pretty much add it or um, or view fires element and we can start doing some kind of binding here so the first thing that i want to change is i want to change my inventory and then my inventory what i want to do i want to keep things simple uh, i don't want to do the full crude element so i just want to show like a, a way how to add a new product and that new product can be added and then we have like a table to see pretty much all the products and see the inventory 
I don't. I will not handle how to change the inventory. I will not handle anything like that because you already know a little bit more about the cruise functionality, how it can be implemented. So that is not the scope. I just want to make some really quick just to demonstrate some things, right? Um, probably later in another video we can actually go to a little more detail, but for now I just want to keep the things really, really simple. So let's go to inventory, and we're already there. So one thing that I want to add is I want to add my container. And my container, I want to add my row. This row needs to be um, justify center. I want to keep ever to center it. And I want to add a button. This button will have just something like add new product. And just to keep it like somehow format, let's put that there. So if we save it, we go to the application. Let me close this because we have issue with the card. I will show you, we will fix that later. If I go to the inventory, I have that product right where I supposed to have it. Um, it's actually a little ugly to have it there. So we can actually resolve that. And I'm thinking where to resolve it. We can actually resolve it right there or we can resolve it in the application. Probably it's going to be better if we actually resolve it in our particular um, Yeah, let's actually resolve it somewhere else. So let's go to here. You know what? No, let's go to the application section. Yeah, let's go there. So we have the content. And my content will have a class. And we have a party, uh, margin bottom of four. Sorry, this actually needs to be a margin top. And let me change the order because the order made me crazy. There you go. So we have here and there. And we have that little padding there. So this is going to open like a model, and that model is just to allow us to add some kind of products in there. And we will be able to see a new product co collection with every product that we need to add in our element. So for continuation, continuation, sorry. Let me just verify really quick my code. There you go, I have it here. So let's. Let's close it, and after we added that new product, we need to do something with this button. Let's actually give it some kind of color. So that success will give us like a red element, somehow. I don't like it, so let me actually do darken too, probably. It's too dark. And probably that one can stay a little bit, like add a new product and it will open a new model. So this button, what I'm going to do is, I need to have a data element. At that data element, we need to have, if I'm adding something, and by default is going to be false, so that means that I'm not adding anything. So when I click that button, so I can actually do some kind of add click. I want to do something that stops that is like prevent to continue doing any of the things that it's supposed to do. And I just want to have my adding equal true. That's the only thing that's going to be doing. And that adding true will be have is the one that we actually have in our model or, or dialog box that we want to show. So let's actually show you, let's go to beautify, let me also see the documentation in there, and in documentation, in the UI components, we can have the dialogues, there is one that's called with X without activator, that's why we need to stop modifier, 
So we open it, and we have something like this, right? This is what I need to have. So it without the code, without they have that button, that we pretty much open the dialog, I just call it adding, and then I have the B dialog element with a card inside, and then we can add whatever we want to that card. Of course, that dialogs need to be, we have a B model of the same element that is going to be transformed to that particular button. So that means that we can go and master this button. We just do a dialog. This dialog will have a B model of adding. I'm going to put something there. Silly. So whenever I just click it, it's not doing anything yet. And because adding is misspelled. So as you can see, I have that X there. I click it and it's open some kind of model there. And it's really ugly because it doesn't have any kind of styling. But we can see this actually working. It's open something. And if I click inside, it's a stay. But if I click outside, it's pretty more discarding it. And it's what I need to have it. So let's. We can have something like max with equal and row 480, probably. I believe it's a really good size. So let's have instead of the ugly X, let's have a V card. And then put the ugly X in there. There you go. We started doing something, right? Perfect. So now that we have the card, of course, we need to add our card title. And this card title is going to be add new product. Let me refresh it. There you go. It's look a little small. Probably we do. Let's change the class to title. No, let's do headline. Perfect, it's a little bit bigger. I like it. So we have the title there. And then we can have the B card text. And in here we can have a B form. And we can actually do the validation for the form. I don't want to do that now um, because I'm being a little bit lazy. I already have something there. So I have a text field with the name, a text field with text area with the description, a uh, text field with the quantity, a text field for the price, and then we put that price with capital P, and a checkbox for showing catalog. So we can actually like hide an element and not show it to the catalog. So just to show that kind of functionality. And we have an issue because this new product is actually not existing yet. So what we need to do is just put it right here. That we, by default, the new product have no name, no description, quantity zero, price zero, and show catalog by default is false. So we can add it. We can have some kind of form there. So whenever we just put like a new product here and with the description, we can actually start putting some kind of validation and some kind of pricing and we define if we want it or not to be in the catalog. So we can have it like as it is. Of course, after we have that form, um, actually after we have the text, I want to have my big car actions. And my big car action is I can have a lot button. One is going to be for uh, cancel, another going to be for add, for example. So we have that. Let me just push those to the right. So we push actually that with a B spacer, I believe. B spacer, there you go. 
Okay, those get pushed to the right. And we can actually change this to be both to be text. Perfect. And we can actually color the color equal and we can hide different colors. Let me assign the orange dark in one. Okay, I like it. And the add let's change it to from orange to green. There you go. Have the console and the add. The console, what it's going to be doing. So here we just have a click, you're going to clear, and at click is going to add. And that means that we need to create about the two methods, one called clear, one called add, and we're supposed to be doing something with those methods. So with the clear element, it's actually really, really simple. We're going, and let me actually just call this. It's going to be this dot new product equal to this. It's pretty much we are resetting this element because I don't want to keep something there. This is going to, and we need to hide the adding again. And we call this dot adding equal to false. So what this is going to be doing is we have something there. If you click cancel and we it's going to be empty the next time that we open it. Because if we don't have it like that, that means that whenever we open it and put something in there, close it, open it again, we can see that information stays. So we just want to make sure that that information is not there. So that's why we are doing this. But if it's one to add it, we want to do something about it. And the things that we're going to be doing is something as simple as this. Of course, the add needs to be asynchronous because we are handle a database connection. And for this database, we're calling Okay, for my collection product, I will add this new product. Of course, this new product is already defined through here. That's it. As simple as that. And as they decided, we just need to clear the the form. And to clear the form is by restrict the new product uh, object from this particular form and change the adding to form in order to close it. Of course, because we are calling that database collection. Sorry, the database object we need to import it. So we just need to import our database from plugins Firebase. And if missing the from. So let's add it. This is going to call new product. This is the description of this new product. I will add one element, price of $9.99, and I want to show it in the catalog. If I add it, we don't see anything here, but it's going to go to the database and we refresh it. We will verify that actually that product collection is already there with our new product already showing in the database. Pretty cool, right? So now it's time to start showing those products somewhere. And I want to show those products actually right about this. I want to create just a really big table, that simple data table show with that information. The really cool about Beautify is we have the tables element. There you go. And this data table, what it does, you just have that information show it and give you some functionality like sorted and stuff like that, right? We have some compagination too. Pretty neat if we need it. 
and we can be as complex as we want. We want to select something for later, or we want to have like an open element in the table, or I don't know, sort by diff multiple columns, have a certain functionality, um, a loading states, a smaller table, footer options, etc., etc. So we can have a bunch of information. I don't want to complicate things. That's why I'm doing the simplest one. This is a simple data table where we require a header element, that's pretty much this element of here, and the items element. And then we specify how many elements per page we want to have. So what I want to do, I just want to create my product headers and it's going to be a data element. So after the new product, I will create my product headers, and those are tied to sell elements that I already saved to the database. So this needs to have a text that is going to be the description, and then the value is going to be the name of the fields. As you can see, those fields match this value, because that's how Beautify will know what element or what information it needs to be handled right there. And this is just like the pretty name that we're going to start showing, right? So now that we have that, we also need to have our product array. This product array will bring whenever we create this element, and this element is going to be created before the method. So we just call the be created. And we call, as you remember, the bind functionality. And this bind functionality is just going to be at the end of the method. It will be a synchronous function. And the only thing they're going to do is bind my products array that is empty to the collection of products. That way we should be able to handle and see those products we're supposed to. Of course, we need to add that element now to our field. So after that row, in another line, I just want to put, and I will just copy and paste it in order to make it simpler, another row that have center, it have a, a bigger margin at the top, and then it will take the whole space for the columns, where I will have my data table. The data table have my product headers as headers and my products as items and they're dynamically. And then you give an elevation just to show in uh, just a class of to be above the page. That's it. It's a simple thing. So this simple line, if I save it, I go to here, I can see that my new product is actually showing where it's supposed to. The way that it's supposed to be there. Now we saw something really weird. It's actually taking the whole screen. That means that container is not the way that it's supposed to. As you can see, container. There you go. If I refresh, there you go. I have that little gap to the right to the left. Sorry for that. So now we have that table showing that information. That's the way that we need it. If I create a new product, this is other product. With another description. And we have 10 of these and the price is going to be 599. And let's show it to catalog. So whenever we add it to the database, it gets rendered in our table right away. Remember that binding is already there. So we have the product the way that it's supposed to, and we're able to see it the way that we want actually to look at that. And I believe that's pretty neat. So we can actually call it for now. Let me just go there and let me commit everything. I'll call it added inventory. Um, added inventory. Let's keep it simple. And now that we have product and we're able to, to add, this is not in the 
main page, for example, blah, blah. And we have 100, 100. I will remove it, no show in the catalog because I want to make something for my home page. Now that we have those products in the inventory, we should be able to start render those in the home page. So let's actually start doing that. So after we added the, the functionality, we need to start working with our home element. So now in home, we need to that, start doing something really, really quick. So let me just, I already have my home here. And let me just copy over my text. I will import it and paste it. And we are going to do uh, without the hello there. Right. Mm, what else do I have here? How this that is supposed to be there with a comma. And I believe that's it. So this is going to give it welcome to Mucho Shop. Perfect. And um, from here, the only things that I'm doing, if I have a row with the title, as you can see it, and I'm not showing the rest, I need to see what's happening. Uh, cards in the event menu. It's talking about uh, products is not defining on the instant. It is defined, it, right? We have it right here. Products, yes, it's there. Hmm, I don't know what is happening. Well, it will refresh. Ooh, we have an issue. So let me pause the video for a minute and I see what is actually happening. Well. It's not working for something probably is missing with the copy and paste that I did. So let's actually start writing this. So I return to my hello there. So what I want, the first thing that I want to do is I have I want to have my my container. And inside my container I want to have my row. And here I will have my elements calmly. Welcome to the which is shop, right? The name of my shop there. And then I want to have another row. And here we're going to have pretty much every product that I need, right? So in order to have those products in there, I just need to have my data element for my product. And of course, there needs to be an empty array. I need to have my Whenever I mount this element, I call my this bind, and I will have my method going to be asynchronous called bind. I'm going to be doing something about this, and what I want to do, oh, before I actually do anything there, I just need to import my whoa import my database from my plugins firebase that will allow me to have in my await this dollar sum bind remember that this bind came actually from the view fire it helping us a lot and we will bind my products with my database collection of products but I just want to get where the show catalog is equal if it's actually how Firebase handle it true so when I you give me those ones that are actually just true we should be having mm, those catalog elements there so let's just have a simple P with my product and let's call B 
for p in product where my key is equal to PID you will refresh this hmm products there yes show catalog equal true is actually there this happened when it's binding in the metal and mounted perfect so something is happening here again We refresh it. I'm not doing it. Did I save it? Yes, I did. Oh, wait. Pin products with my key of PID. No, let's see what's happening again. So let me see my, no, it's not my state. So let me see my content, home, my second row, or my home. I just have my product, it's an array of zero. That means that this something products, products. Yeah, those are their products, perfect. Just in case, let me just copy this over again. Hmm. They didn't like it, and I'm having something different here. Oh. True, <laughs> this is the issue. True is not a string, it's actually a, a real Boolean value, that's why it's having that issue. And now I'm able to see my products where my show catalog is actually true. That means that my inventory has three products on there, but one of that is we have it that false, and we can just show the elements that we actually need to have in our catalog. As simple as that. So let me just copy the card element. And because I'm being lazy here. Um, let's, you know what? Let's not copy the card element because something could go wrong again. So let's have it a, a column. And this column, we have that before. Of product in product. And my key is going to be my product ID. And it will have my columns is going to be equals to 12 by default. But in a medium sizing is going to be equals to six. That means like two columns per row. And in the bigger size it's going to be my columns equal to four. And this need to end it here. Okay. If we have something like this, we put our product there. Our product, sorry for the not be. We have those two there. So if we do it smaller, we can see that it's actually occupying six and six. And the smaller is just showing one. You can see that it's some kind of that responsiveness there, right? Let's just add, just in this case, last one. Hello there. I'm expensive. And let's put this one that we have 10, and the price is 109.99. Yeah. So now we go to the home, we have the this element, and we scroll down, we can see that we have only two columns, only one column. So we can a little bit that responsiveness, right, that we need. So we see that this is actually working, perfect.
So that means that instead of having this product here, I want to have a card. And this card will have, have a card title. And that card title will have my product name in there. It's actually showing that it's supposed to. Perfect. Then I, I want to have a subtitle. And that subtitle will be a really complex subtitle that we have a container with a row we have the title there and the pr price and everything so we can have this price on the left and commonly left we have on the right pretty neat right and then after the subtitle we can have the text this pretty much our description there you go and after that description, we can have our actions. And those actions are going to be a couple of buttons. And we will define this element. Let me actually just remove it right now. Like that. So we just find that we have a two card. And whenever if the user is empty, we can actually believe we can change it. If, if we have a user, we can add, add to cart. If it's not have user, we have the please login. And of course, this user is not getting called, so we just need to call. Verify that the user is connected. Remember, getting this information to there, and then we have the computer element that we're mapping our user to the get user. That will allow me to have the card. It's so all we log out. It's requesting to log in. We can log in, and we get back. The only thing that we're actually going to do is change that login to um, add to card. So only user authenticated can add something to the card. It's the only thing that we are actually calling. And with saying that the quantity is zero, we show the out to card is disabled or not disabled. What that means is we can actually add, and let me just, you know what, let me this new product, just what it is. Let me change this quantity to zero. And that will allow us to just refresh because of how didn't bring it here. That out of stock and we cannot add it to the card. So because we are doing that out of stock right here. So if the quantity is bigger than zero, we have how many products have left. Or we just, now we just have the out stock. So we have that kind of validation. And we can add the image too if we want it, but it's probably too much right now. So I believe I can add it. I can leave it right in the series right now. So let's continue in the next video. So let me stop now. Um, do you want to go through the code? You can actually go through the code. Let me just start adding this information. And you can see this particular commit called it uh, homepage. And I'm actually going to push it right now. I already have that repository done. So let me just stop the video right now and we continue another one doing the car functionality and my orders. So I hope that you like it. Happy coding, everybody.